What's your view of sexual role playing or um, getting into rather involved, advanced um, gaming, um, digital gaming, or um, reading horror novels or watching science fiction movies or something like that? What do you? What, what, what does all this mean to you? What is it? What's What's its ultimate nature? What is that about? I would posit the view that it's um, a deliberate suspension of disbelief. Uh, something in us, say, if you're we're talking about sexual role playing, people think that maybe their sex life could be a lot better if you know um, you know you get your partner to dress up like a French maid, um, or you um, you know decide that you're Romeo and Juliet or something. I, I, I'm not into that, but you know I can see the attraction why people might be into it, make believe sexually. Um, wh what is that? Um, I, I'm not. I'm not saying what is that morally speaking. Um, to me, it's morally neutral. It's irrelevant. But what I mean is what what's going on there? Um, well, two people that know that, or <laughs> perhaps more than two, <laughs> uh, that know that they are not Romeo and Juliet, or they know that um, you know they're not um, ills of the Nazi bitch, uh, or uh, you know a submissive. Uh, male slave of hers, they know that they're not this, but for a time, because uh, to get some benefit out of, uh, some benefit that they desire, they assume these roles. Now, I rather suspect that when you're in the middle of this kind of thing, as can happen if you're reading a very good horror novel, or if you're reading, uh, or if you're playing a, a game, online game, or a digital game, or gaming, or whatever you call it, I'm not into that, so I don't know the lingo. Something in you um, wants to believe that that's that this is all real. Um, you know, it, it, it comes up in things like virtual reality, which is you know sort of the expected way of the future. All this kind of thing, creating your own reality. Um, what is that? What exactly is happening? And and when we compare that, say, to a completely rationalistic. Um, um, materialistic view of the universe, what is it all about? Um, why would it even exist as such in a, in a, in a completely physical universe or uh, an utterly materialistic existence or a materialistic reality? We want to suspend disbelief, or some of us do some of the time. Um, I don't think anyone who dresses up in tight latex pants and engages in, you know, role-playing sexually, wants to actually live this way every day of their life. This person might be an accounting consultant and live in an otherwise utterly off-the-radar kind of existence, but, you know, every Saturday night they go out to a club and dress up in a strange way, uh, well, or what we would consider, well, I wouldn't even say we, but most people would consider eccentric and engage in practices that have precious little to do with phenomenal reality. They're playing, essentially. Um, what is that? Um, reasonable, rational, um, very intelligent people often um, engaging in things which are utterly irrational and playful. Um, what is it that makes us want to consciously violate our own beliefs, or I shouldn't say violate, but step out of our own beliefs. Um, I'm currently talking about Tantra. I mentioned in my video on Bhakti in the Atheism versus India Revisited series that actual belief in the deity isn't important. Um, actual belief that Krishna actually exists in some sense uh, is not absolutely essential, strictly speaking, in Bhakti. You must love. So you just sort of, you know, in the Catholic sense, you pretend like you have faith. The, the Catholic uh, philosophy says, act as though you have faith, and faith will be given to you. In other words, I don't believe this, but I'm going to make myself act as though I do, and then belief will come. Well, I would say, keep going once you've acted as though you believed, and then you do believe, and then make sure you have the capacity to suspend that belief again. First you must suspend your disbelief, then you must suspend your belief. I think most people do that anyway. I think most religious people do that anyway. 
Um, they tell themselves that they believe all kinds of things and then they act otherwise simply because they've suspended their belief for the time being. Um, I believe the human human beings have that capacity. I, you know, it, it strikes me that we are so I inconsistent that this doesn't seem to be out of character with being human. Uh, it seems to be part and parcel of what we are. Um, there's all kinds of ways that actual uh, what we would call the sciences deals with deal with things like that. You know, as I say, virtual reality. Um, the why of it is kind of a mystery. Why would we want virtual reality? Um, well, we are the one use it therapeutically, as in the case of um, group therapy, or one could say hypnotherapy, or um, what, what's it called there? The um, uh, psychodrama, where you act things out. You know, like let's say you have unresolved issues with someone who is now deceased or beyond your reach. You can no longer fix things with that person, so you sit down with a therapist and you... the therapist assumes the role of that individual and you tell that person how you feel and this person then I think would interact with you in the same way that you would expect that other person to interact with you. To get rid of you know, log jams of emotional and psychological in your own head to help you deal with whatever it is that you want, that, that is you know, um, causing you whatever trouble that makes you seek a therapist. Um, or, you know, I, there's other things, you know, other ways that, you know, uh, just as a simple form of relaxation, we read novels or whatever. We, um, we go into a different reality. Um, <clears throat> I think that we as a society, um, because of our materialistic bent and because of our logical bent, in other words, non-contradiction and things like that, um, we tend to sort of say, well, you either believe in something or you don't. Well, I can believe in it now and then I won't believe it tomorrow and then I believe it again. It sounds like, you know, uh, this is what I'm, what, what I uh, sort of pilloried logic rolls the dice's point of view earlier about was that I said human beings actually do believe different things throughout different time periods and it's entirely possible I suppose that you can believe in two contradictory things at once. In fact one could argue that it's almost impossible not to. Be that as it may I don't think that's a resolvable dispute. Um, but um, what I would say is um, you have to deal with the fact that something in you wants to suspend your beliefs, your present beliefs. You want to believe in many different things that don't that are not compatible with each other at all but again our law of non-contradiction which we built right into our way of thinking I think in the West doesn't allow this and this creates I don't know some sort of sense of something missing in our lives or the very fact that we have this very rigid view of what reality is we don't get the benefits that we would otherwise get from say suspending reality in the case of therapy say I have issues with my mother my mother is my mother died when I was 23. I have to resolve those issues because it's still bugging the hell out of me and keeping me awake at night or whatever, whatever issue it is. You know, family issues are notoriously like that. So, um, so I have to suspend disbelief if I want to confront my mother. She's dead. I can't confront her. Um, but, okay, I still have a need to do this because I have issues that can perhaps be worked out by confronting her dead or not. So I confront her even though I pretend that she's alive. I suspend my disbelief. Now you don't want to go crazy and turn into a character in a Stephen King novel who believes that his mother is actually alive. <laughs> um, you know, it, it might be useful for you to uh, confront your mother, but you still want your feet planted firmly on the ground. And I think that you could probably do that. There is an element of playing with fire here, I think, because you're playing with reality, but you know, if you're careful, and I always push the idea of self-discipline, you need to have self-discipline at all times when you're doing this. The, the reason why I would say you would need self-discipline is, uh, I would compare it again to the, the guy who sits down, plugs himself into his gaming apparatus, plays a game where he shoots up the bad guys and commits mass murder and all this kind of thing, and then he just, click, takes his apparatus off and becomes a suburban drudge again, harmless to, no, to to everyone. He wouldn't hurt a flea. But something in him wants to go on a shooting spree. Um, and, you know, he has the means now to indulge in that. And he has the means to both suspend disbelief and 
um, put it put disbelief back in after he's done with it. <laughs> uh, if you get it down to a to something you can click on and off, like um, like a switch, or in my case of the um, the person who's into uh, role playing and sex, you can say there's a time and a place for this. It's all um, you know, it's all very rigid. At least you do that here. You don't do it there. Um, one could do this if you ask me for just about anything. Uh, I'm talking about tantra. Now, look at it this way. I don't actually do this, but I'm sort of something of an apologist for this kind of attitude. Let's say that um, I'm fascinated with what it must be like to be uh, a worshipper of the more ferocious aspects of the goddess Kali. I want to know what that means. Ah, I have an idea. I'll become a Kali worshipper, at least for tomorrow. I'll, um, just tomorrow only, and the day after I'll be myself again. I'll, uh, set up a big, uh, I don't know, altar to Kali. I'll, uh, chant mantras, burn incense, uh, sing songs of praise to her, uh, meditate thinking, oh, what must, you know, what, what, what must you be, Kali, to me, you know, all this kind of thing. I don't do any of this, but I'm just sort of positing the view that, you know, you could suspend uh, disbelief. Why would you do that? Well, in one, for one good reason, simple curiosity. The second one is, instead of the Western emphasis on therapeutic uh, application, I would say there's also enhancements, enhancements of one's life. Can you imagine if one day a week you could actually commune with God, <laughs> and the rest of the week you don't believe that God exists at all? Um, I think that that's actually possible, to be perfectly honest. I think that the human mind is capable of that kind of gymnastics. And at the end of the day, I think that actually that kind of is what is behind almost all religious belief. Um, we don't really believe what we think we believe, or we just believe that we believe what we believe. <laughs> um, whereas it's just a case of replacing disbelief with belief, and then consciously replacing it again with disbelief afterwards. You know, that's why you get the notorious penchant that the religious have for blatant hypocrisy and violating the, the tenets of their own religion. It's simply because human beings are not consistent in believing and disbelieving things. So you say, okay, uh, I've converted to Islam, I want to be a very good Muslim. So I'm a good guy and, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a pious person, I pray five times a day, I, you know, fast, give alms, etc. But I happen to have a very strong libido. <laughs> And, I don't know, my four wives don't cut it for me, so, you know, I uh, indulge otherwise. But I do so with the approval of my wives. I do so making sure that I don't bring home any diseases, and I do so in a way that's not going to negatively affect my family life. That's blatant hypocrisy, but it's the hypocrisy that's very traditional and kind of winked at in every single society. Um, it reminds me of the... Um, the old uh, thing about um, comparing um, what is allowed and what is forbidden in Europe. It's, uh, what is it in, um, in, in England, everything is allowed except for what is forbidden. In Germany, everything is forbidden except for what is allowed. In Russia, everything is, al everything is forbidden, even what is allowed. And in France, everything is allowed, even what is forbidden. <laughs> you know, it's just, it is forbidden, but it's allowed. It's allowed to happen. I've been to many Islamic countries, and in most of them, you can actually get drunk or chase prostitutes if you want to. You've got to stay out of sight, but you can do it. Everybody knows what you're doing, but you can't disturb the general peace or the facade of society. So do that inside your own mind. Not in your, in your external life, but in your internal life. As I say, um, is it possible to be a convinced atheist six days of the week and then be a Christian on Sunday? You, one would ask, why would you want to do that? Well, what if that's the way our minds are put together? What if that's just the way what we are fundamentally? We are a contradiction. I've said this before. Um, we can, if you ask me, switch our beliefs on and off all the time at will. Um, and it kind of makes us think, oh my God, we're playing with fire here, because belief is your absolute solid grounding in reality. Um, again, self-discipline is the key. You have to make sure that you have worked out a way of doing this safely. 
and you're not going to drive yourself insane by doing it. Um, I think, as I say, most people do it intuitively, but imagine doing it deliberately um, as you know a form of therapy, or, or not even a form of therapy, but a form of enhancement of your life or exploration of your inner life. Um, tomorrow I'm going to believe in Santa Claus, and the next day I'm not going to. <laughs> you know, um, again, I think we can do that. In fact, I think that it almost comes naturally to humans to be like that, to be contradictory and, and hypocritical. Now you sort of say, okay, well, what kind of a society would it be if we all acted like that? We already do act like that. <laughs> um, just admitting to ourselves that we are this way, I don't think is going to cause any danger. Uh, it's just assumed that um, everything is allowed, even what is forbidden, means something. What it means is it's allowed, but it's forbidden. In other words, you've got to do it in the privacy of your own home or whatever, but apart from that, that's your own business. You know, Apart from that, who cares what you do? Um, it's the old dichotomy of public versus private life. Um, and I think that I think that one could actually apply this to, to many different things, many different philosophies. It's how you apply any kind of philosophy, I think, to your own life, because life defies the application of philosophy to it. Uh, we all have a whole pile of contradictory weird things. As I say, my, my own personal philosophy contains elements of Jainism and elements of Tantra, which you would think would be the polar opposites of each other, and Nietzsche, who is the most spit-firing of atheists. <laughs> you know, how, how can I reconcile all of that in my mind? I can. I don't know how it all happens, but it, it's possible. Um, and, it, and it hasn't, as far as I know, driven me insane. I hold down a job. I am married. I have a child. I, you know, I live a rather ordinary life. So, what is belief, and who is in control of our beliefs? I, I mentioned before that logic is a useful tool, but we mustn't be dominated by it. I would say belief is the same thing. Belief is a very useful thing. Um, but belief is a tricky thing, because we can't allow our beliefs to become a prison. If you allow... See, I, I tend to sort of live as though I live in a completely materialistic universe. Okay, I, I, I'm not going to step out of a 12th story window or anything like that because I know what's going to happen even though I say that I at a certain point in science says that the laws of physics stop working after a certain point but I'm pretty sure that if I step out of a 12th story window I'm gonna go splat on the pavement below so okay I do sort of think that I I live as though I live in a in a completely materialistic universe um, but I'm capable of stepping out of that <laughs> I'm capable of leaping beyond that as it were um, whenever I pick up a, a horror novel, I'm doing that. I'm allowing my beliefs to be suspended. What if you could do this consciously and point your beliefs in certain directions while remaining fully grounded in the phenomenal reality, the phenomenal world that we all have to exist in and interact with each other in, in more importantly? Um, it's not so much that I want to abolish the physical universe, but I want to at least suspend its lock on me. I want my beliefs to be my tool, not my boss. The same way that I want logic to be my tool and not my master. I think that with the proper type of uh, self-discipline, you can do this a lot more exhaustively than simply the person who dresses up like little Bo Peep uh, for her husband every Saturday night and engages in whatever kind of consensual play that they get up to. Um, I think that we can do this in many, many, many fields. And we should not have this feeling of haram about playing with reality, provided we are disciplined enough. Um, I think first you have to fully, or my opinion would be on this, you would have to fully get rid of your idea that there is only one reality. If you can hack that, then I think that you can, you're grounded enough that you can actually make it reality that elastic. If you're not grounded enough, then you'd better stay with the reality that you're comfortable with. I would say that that's Nietzsche's herd. They create this reality that they're all into, this big mythology of society and countries and God, country, patriotism, economics, work, nine to five, all this kind of thing, because this is the only reality that they're capable of grasping, and it's enough for them. Some of us want to leap beyond that, and I think we can do it, and I think we can do it safely and healthily. <laughs>